This video is a short introduction to the topic of teaching large classes, focusing primarily on English language teaching. It discusses key aspects of context, where large classes are often found, challenges that we face when teaching large classes, and potential solutions or workarounds for some of these challenges. Large classes are generally considered to be those with over 40 students, although definitions may need to be context specific. What is considered large in universities is very different to primary classrooms, for example. There are two broad context types in which large classes often occur. The first of these is at tertiary level, such as universities and colleges, where particularly lectures but also seminars are regularly delivered to tens, even hundreds of learners. In such tertiary contexts, students usually have the literacy and skills to enable them to learn both independently and collaboratively with peers, meaning that the challenges of tertiary large classes are often fewer. The second broad context involves primary and secondary levels, compulsory education and is often found in mainstream educational systems of low-income countries across the Global South, particularly in parts of Africa and South Asia, but also sometimes in East Asia. At primary and secondary levels, learners are still learning to learn. Many may lack basic literacy and social skills, and because school and English lessons are compulsory, motivation levels may vary a lot. In this second context, large classes are often seen as one of several challenges of what is sometimes called teaching in difficult or challenging circumstances. Because the challenges of large classes vary a great deal depending on context, I'll focus here on two areas of challenge that result directly from the class size itself, rather than associated challenges thinking primarily about primary and secondary contexts. The first falls under the scope of what is often called classroom management and includes ensuring that learners remain focused on our intended activities and outcomes, as well as the higher likelihood of off-task and disruptive behaviour. If we want to do a more complex activity or move learners about, this often takes more time more planning and more effort than in smaller classes. Even simple aspects of communication can become challenging, such as being heard above the ambient noise or writing on the board largely and clearly enough for all to see. Pair work or group work speaking practice is an additional challenge specific to language teaching. The noise can be deafening and other teachers in neighbouring classrooms may complain. The second area of challenge falls under the scope of individual learner needs and the importance of providing for these. Many teachers who teach large classes have several hundred learners in total. It often takes several months just to learn their names and much longer to become familiar with their interests, preferences and individual challenges, including specific educational needs. To provide a personal example of this, while I was working in Eritrea, I taught one large secondary class for several months before I found out that one student, who often sat right at the back of the class, had severe dyslexia. Also related to the area of learner needs is the extra workload that teachers of large classes face with regard to providing individual feedback in particular. Giving such feedback, including correction, on written work can take hours if you have several large classes. While there are some advantages to teaching larger classes, such as the diverse creativity and range of skills that you will find, as well as the communal energy of the environment, these can often only be capitalised upon as learners begin to self-regulate their own learning and behaviour, which may not happen until higher secondary grades in many contexts. Although a regular focus on developing learner autonomy and study skills can help to speed up this process. From personal experience of teaching large classes in several countries, I can confirm that all of the above often lead to higher levels of teacher stress, 
particularly if behaviour management is a challenge, and fatigue. I was always very tired at the end of a full day's teaching. Several of the strategies and solutions for the challenges of teaching large classes relate to institutional factors. The first of these is the design of the classrooms, not something that we can usually influence as teachers, but important nonetheless. However, the second is one that some of us can influence as teachers, making sure that whenever possible, we keep the same class of learners for several years. Given the amount of time it takes to learn their names and needs and build rapport, this is an obvious solution. So whenever possible, try to convince those in charge of organising timetables to maintain this continuity. The remaining solutions that I'm going to focus on relate broadly to issues of classroom management, something we are directly responsible for as teachers. They are collated from a range of sources and all have also been useful to me as a teacher of large classes. Get your learners into specific routines and rituals, involving them wherever possible, such as through the use of monitor roles. Develop rituals for how you want them to respond to your questions or listen to each other. Cultivate a number of strategies for getting silence in the class. With regard to rules, we can establish these at the start of the academic year, but don't forget to stick to them if you also want your learners to. Students can design classroom contract posters displaying these rules. Regarding behaviour management, first and foremost, don't forget to notice good behaviour and praise it. That creates a positive environment of trust and respect and builds learner confidence. And be consistent in your choice of sanctions for bad behaviour. If possible, have a hierarchy, starting perhaps with a warning, followed by reseating of individuals, giving extra work, such as homework, up to notifying the school head teacher and parents if necessary. Whenever inappropriate behaviour is noticed, avoid humiliating individuals during the lesson. Notify them calmly that you want to talk to them after class and then, during these pep talks, take a little time to get them to reflect on their own behaviour before providing your response and deciding upon a sanction if necessary. This builds rapport with individuals and often leads to the recognition of a specific educational need that may have been missed in a large class. While there is a lot of focus today on learner-centred, collaborative learning, such practices tend to originate in smaller classes and particularly at primary and secondary levels can be difficult to do effectively in large classes. Bear in mind that there is also plenty of evidence that when interactive, involving questions and elicitation, whole class teaching can also be very effective and is no less feasible in large classes than smaller ones. We can provide input at a reasonable pace. Learners can hear and take notes. And we can even include a few choral activities, such as transformation drills and songs, daily rituals, that can keep learners engaged and speaking a little English. While group and pair work speaking practice can work in some large class contexts, as this video of an effective teacher from Eritrea shows, in others they can be noisy and lead to off-task or disruptive behaviour. But remember that learners can also practice productive skills individually through writing and support their peers through the use of desk groups, giving you time to move around the class and provide individual support. When individual activities have finished, these can often be followed by simple structured pair work tasks, such as comparing answers or reading out what they've written to their partner. When engaging learners in collaborative or cooperative learning, as this teacher from Rwanda is doing, there is quite a lot of practical advice that can help. Learners can often be organised into small groups of three to six students who sit and work regularly together. Providing them with roles that rotate among the group members offers them responsibility. 
and designing activities that require all group members to participate helps to ensure that they work together effectively. If at all possible, you may be able to find extra space outside the classroom, where learners can sit and work in groups on an activity. This reduces the pressure cooker environment of the large class. Learners know that they are expected to work autonomously and you can move among the groups checking that they are on task and supervising progress. This works particularly well with project work. There are many more solutions that can be of use in specific contexts. What works in yours or mine will always depend on a range of factors and this means that we, like our students, will always need to continue learning as we teach large classes. Here are three ways we can do this. Experienced colleagues are often happy to offer advice, particularly to new teachers, and it's normal and okay to admit that you are having difficulty. Also, teacher associations and communities on WhatsApp and Facebook can be really useful, particularly for subject-specific challenges. I'll show you some in a moment. If you are having difficulty with one specific class, arranging a chat with a small group of them is a good idea. Finding out what they think works best and why can provide useful insights. They may also give you tips from other teachers' classes. Today, there is quite a lot of material and advice for teaching large classes on the internet. These can give you ideas for experiments and action research projects, but always treat them critically. Will they work in your classroom? Here are some of the materials and links that I've mentioned in this video, all freely available online. Just pause the video and use the QR reader on your phone or search for publications directly. I have only been able to touch upon some of the challenges and solutions to teaching large classes. I hope the material I've shared with you will offer further support.